So this is, uh, this is I got this from the Gray Zone. Uh, they do great work, Max Blumenthal, yeah. Aaron Mateo. They go, so at the far right, that guy in the far right in that picture is opposition leader Luis Fernando Camacho. He's in Bolivian's presidential palace with a Bible after the coup, right? So he stormed the presidential palace, this guy, Luis Fernando Camacho, and he made his millions in the fossil fuel industry, right? So yeah, yeah, don't keep that in because that's gonna come, what? A millionaire fossil fuel guy is a revolutionary? I don't understand. Well, you're, it'll be explained in a second. So, uh, so just so you know what was happening in Bolivia since uh, Morales got elected in 2006, a new research report from the Center of, for Economic and Policy Research analyzes Bolivia's economic changes since 2006 in the context of the Bolivian government's main policy decisions. It finds that his, it has been policy choices not merely a commodities boom, that have been the driving force in Bolivia's surge to be the fastest growing economy in South America over the past five years. Strong economic growth has allowed Bolivia to reduce poverty by 42% since 2006, and extreme poverty by 60% since 2006. So you know that they can't let that shit. Especially since he turned his nose up at the IMF, right? So the International Monetary Fund, you know how they work, right? They go and they force loans on countries and then they know you can't pay them back because the, but the banker's gotta get his money so now they gotta start, you gotta start selling off your public lands to the bank and now the bank, so now everything gets privatized because the bank, because the IMF just fucked you and that's their uh, MO and so, he put an end to that shit, Morales. Notably, the Bolivian government ended 20 years of IMF agreements in 2006. Many of the policies responsible for Bolivia's economic success since 2006 were previously opposed by the IMF, including, most importantly, the renationalization of hydrocarbons. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, that fucking guy. Oh, wait a minute. That millionaire on the right, he made his money in hydrocarbons. <laughs> I wonder why he wants to have a coup. Oh, that's right, because Morales nationalized all the hydrocarbons. <laughs> and so now the people own their own hydrocarbons. Like the, oil's in, like the oil's in the ground in Bolivia, or the gas is in the ground in Bolivia, so it's the Bolivian peoples. Yeah, so, but, but then it was just a, a company's. Morales says, that's bullshit, it's our gas, and I'm gonna take the profit from that, and I'm gonna lessen poverty, and I'm gonna educate people, and I'm gonna give them health care, and I'm gonna give fucking housing, and I'm gonna build parks, and I'm gonna make it livable, and we're gonna have the best economy growing in five years of all. So that's what he did, and they can't have that shit. So Bolivia has shown that it is possible for a small, poor country in South America to make substantial economic and social progress with macroeconomic stability, solid income growth, and redistribution through a mix of state-led heterodox economic policies and markets. What's heterodox mean? Do you know? No, Fucking ha-ha. <laughs> I don't know either, but at least we're even. Sounds dirty, right? Oh, he's giving her the heterodox. Oh, does it? MMT? Okay. Oh, I was hoping to get heterodox tonight. I, I thought he said DMT. I'm all for DMT. Okay. I'm up so, for that. So guess, so why is this happening? Why now? Well, there's the fossil fuel shit he took over, right? Bolivia is very rich. It is said that it has 70% of the essential material to make new batteries. We all know that there is a change in energy taking place in the world. Former Uruguayan president Jose Mujica said, right? So um, there's that, and then he was opening up their markets, capital markets to China, which is a no-no, and he was gonna give lithium to the Germans, and they can't have them. No, 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 we gotta have it. We gotta have it, right? Uh, so the US Agency for the International Development, uh, the National Endowment for Democracy, it's called NED. Now, if you don't know who NED is, Recently, I got smeared by an online news site called Bellingcat, and they said that I took money from a pro-Assad group, and then later that year, I said the gas attack was a false flag. So I did a little checking. 
on who Bellingcat was, and they're funded by the National Endowment for Democracy, which is the fucking U.S. State Department's regime change wing. It's called NED. So the government is literally funding guys to write smear pieces on other U.S. citizens who are telling the truth about war. So that's who these, so the US Agency for International Development and the NED has long thrown millions of dollars at Bolivian opposition groups and NGOs, which are, that stands for non-government organizations. So NED is funding these people that are sowing discord or revolution to overthrow the democratically elected socialist Morales, right? And it, 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 they're doing destabilization efforts, including violent anti-government protests in Santa Cruz, which just happens to be where a civic committee leader and Christian zealot, Luis Fernando Camacho, is based. So the United States government is funding this guy, uh, Luis Fernando Camacho, who's a millionaire because he wants to get his goddamn gas back. The United States want to get rid of a socialist so the Chinese doesn't have uh, their capital markets invested there, and we get to keep the lithium. So that's what the fuck is going on in Bolivia. Just so, so if you weren't sure what's going on, that's that's what's going on. Now, they had an, so they had an election. So they had an election. And all five out of six polls predicted that Morales would win by 10 points. And now if you win by 10%, you, they don't do, a, they do like uh, two runoffs. There's the first one, and then if you don't, if somebody wins by 10%, it's over. But if you don't, the top two have a runoff. Well, he won by more than 10%. And that's what, well, here it is. Uh, this guy says, eventually the official count was released. Morales won in the first round 47% to 36%. So it's over 10%, so they don't go to a second round of voting. So he's the president, and that's it, right? If you had been watching the polls before the election, five out of six of them predicted the same result. Where to have a fraud that matches up with the polls, right? So that's, that there's no fraud, right? So this guy, say, what's, we did the fraud. No, they admitted the fraud. Who did? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. That did not happen, but hang on. That did not uh, how serious is this situation now? It, uh, people are using uh, words like... So this guy who wrote that report I just quoted from went on the BBC, watch this. Uh, how serious is this situation now? It, uh, people are using uh, words like coup. Are we really there yet? Well, I don't know, when the, you know, when the army tells the president, hey, why don't you pack your shit, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think we're there yet. Well, I think it is serious. I think the opposition or the leadership, at least, is trying to overthrow the government. And, you know, a near majority, 47 percent of the people voted uh, for the president, which was over 10 points more than the next runner up. And so he but won. Those, those and results, sorry to interrupt straight away, but those results are exactly what's disputed. Do you have faith in yeah. those results? Yes. Well, if you notice, you can read, you know, dozens, hundreds of articles since October 20th on the web and on this election. And not one presents even one shred of evidence that the election uh, was in doubt, uh, stolen or anything else. And so this is uh, this is very bad. I think uh, it was very bad decision on the part of the organization of American states. They can they put one sentence into their press release after the election without any evidence whatsoever, implying that there was something wrong with the result. And so that was picked up by most of the media. But you, you can look at any website for any major news organization in the world, and no one has yet presented any evidence. And that's because there isn't any. I mean, you don't even have to need, you don't even need a statistical analysis. We did one, which you can see at CPR.net, but you can just look at the numbers uh, from the election, and there's nothing that indicates anything was wrong. Okay, well, given that, why are so many people out on the streets now, then, do you think? Well, you had a lot of people in 2009 uh, on the streets tried to overthrow the government uh, then. And so you do have a, an opposition that wants to get rid of this government, and they've used violence in the past. And so it's it's not that surprising, but I think the media has played a huge role by simply repeating over and over again this allegation, which is really nothing at this point more than a, an unfounded conspiracy theory, because there's nothing to indicate that there's something wrong with the result. And the Organization of American States is there now conducting an audit, and the opposition refuses even to accept that because they want to get rid of the government. 
Uh, what about... Okay, so there you go. So that is what's happening in Bolivia. Um, there, uh, there is never any evidence. There's no experts. But the media is reporting it over and over. That is true. The media is reporting over and over that there were uh, irregularities. Turns out there weren't any. In fact, he went on Democracy Now! and he said this. Preliminary report, and there's really nothing in this uh, latest uh, so, uh, so-called preliminary audit that shows that there was any fraud in this election, but it was repeated over and over again uh, in all the media, and so it, it became kind of true. And you know, if you look at the media, you don't see anybody, you don't see any experts, for example, uh, saying that there was something wrong with the vote count. It's really just that OAS observation mission, which was under a lot of pressure, of course, from uh, Senator Rubio, and uh, the Trump administration. So the OAS is the Organization of American States, right? And so they're funded by the United States, right? And so they've been pressured to say this shit, so, and they're saying it, right? So they're, and they're the only ones saying that there was irregularities in the vote count. There weren't irregularities. They have no evidence. There's no proof. Nobody showed any. Here we go. Uh, to do this because they wanted, they've wanted for some time to get rid of this government. In terms of the Trump administration, you can look at uh, a tweet. Okay, so, there, so there's one more thing he says. A military coup uh, supported by the United States. So, Mark Weisbrot, you have the CIA involvement in coups in Bolivia in 1952, in 1964, 1970, 1980. Would you add— Ooh, that's quite a—ooh, that's nice. 2019 to that list? I would add it to the list. I mean, we don't have the hard evidence of what they did. You know, it's not like 2009 in Honduras where Hillary Clinton wrote in her memoirs <laughs> that she uh, worked uh, in the OAS too, uh, to uh, prevent the, the elected uh, president, uh, who you've had on this show, uh, from coming back to the country and to the presidency. But I, I think we'll probably find out more later, but it's, it's just, it is, it is very obvious um, that they... Okay, so there you go. So, that, so that's what James Carville? What about him? Oh, Bolivia, really? No, for one of the right-wing presidents? No shit. All right, see, this is what I'm talking about. I'll look, I will look into that. So here... <laughs> You know, maybe it's all the fucking Constitution buildings and Liberty Bells and shit. You guys take this shit a little too seriously. So here, <laughs> Philly. So here is, um, so here is how CBS reported this. You ready? Bolivian President Evo Morales has resigned. Morales announced he was stepping down Sunday afternoon after the military asked him to leave office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they asked, the, hey, hey, would you, hey, by the way, I forgot one more thing. Would you mind stepping down? <laughs> would you mind, I'm from the military, which I forgot to ask. It's a beautiful house you have. Would you step down? <laughs> Look, we'll help you pack. I'll even get you an Airbnb in Mexico. No hard feelings. So they went and ransacked his house. Morales' house, they went and ransacked his house, all of his, uh, pu cabinet. His, his cabinet, political people like mayors and cities, they went and they, so they're leaving the country because it's, shit's getting real and they're backed by the CIA. Here's how the Washington Post, uh, by the way, I forgot to, let me just see. I, let me Bolivian just President Evo Morales has resigned. Morales announced he was stepping down Sunday afternoon after the military asked him to leave office. An audit indicated there was a clear manipulation in the country's elections last month. Morales' victory sparked deadly protests which have shut down schools, businesses, and public transportation. Earlier in the day, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo tweeted support for the findings from the election report and called for a democratic electoral pro yeah so there was irregularities in the poll I, can I just say this I wonder if the irregularities in the polls did it include the person with the most votes not winning because <laughs> well, that's how that's the kind of shit we like to do it's good to CBS is good at downplaying military aggression right did you see that they're pretty fucking good at that all right CBS stands for polite imperialism here we go <laughs> This is, how, this is how the richest man in the world's newspaper covered it. This is Washington Post. This is how they covered Bolivia. 
And by the way, this report is brought to you by the same groups that showed people in Iraq thanking George Bush after invading them for no reason. Okay, here we go. Bolivian President Evo Morales resigned after nearly 14 years in power amid a fierce backlash over a disputed election. His First of all, why did they have a high school girl narrate this? <laughs> okay, all right. And she's got like a voice fry. It's like, uh, uh, it's cra I don't know. Is that wrong of me to say that? No. Okay. Stunning fall came hours after the Organization of American States said it found, quote, clear manipulations of the voting system. But they, again, offered no evidence. There's no experts to back it up, no nothing. And Washington Post just repeats it. So you see what I'm saying when I say that, or what I, everybody said, the traditional mainstream establishment corporate media are just stenographers for the State Department. And that's why we're in seven wars and nobody even fucking knows about it. So here we go, a little bit more. Duele mucho que esos señores, algunos comités cívicos y partidos que han perdido, llevar a la. But why does the background music sound like an arcade game from the 90s? <laughs> right? Violencia. Yo va a llevar a la agresión enfrentando entre bolivianos y bolivianos. Y por este y muchas razones. Estoy renunciando, enviando mi carta de renuncia a la Asamblea Legislativa Plurinacional de Bolivia. The heads of armed forces and national police called on Morales, Bolivia's first indigenous president, to resign after weeks of widespread protest. He denounced the pressure as a coup orchestrated by his right-wing challenger, former president Carlos Mesa. Notice how they don't say he was wrong in describing it as a coup. They just go, ah, he announced it as a coup and uh, yeah, whatever, moving on. <laughs> That's it, they don't go in. Well, was it a coup, was it not a coup? and other opposition leaders. <laughs> Strikes, protests, and roadblocks had paralyzed South America's poorest nation ever since the October 20th vote. At least three people died in clashes between Morales' supporters and opponents. Celebrations broke out across the country as news of the president's resignation spread. Yeah, and so did protests demanding that he be reinstated, except you're never going to fucking mention that, are you, you Bezos lackey? No. <laughs> yep. That's right. That report is so slanted, you could build a skateboard ramp on it. So this guy caught this, Alex Rubenstein. So the pro, there was a pro-Bolivia coup demonstrators in Washington, D.C., and they're waving the U.S. flag, shouting, thank you, USA, outside the White House. So they're just kind of like, hey, that's right, you guys, I know you fucking helped us, thank you very much. Uh, their party, by the way, got 4% on October 20th, but they had the Bolivian SWAT team on their side. So that's how you get to overthrow a democratically elected government. And this is like how Guaido in Venezuela, his political party is the sixth most popular in Venezuela, but since it gets most of the funding from USAID, they were chosen as the coup figureheads because they are the most reliable proxies. And that's what's happening in Bolivia. So this guy, is he writes, he's, a, he's an editor at The Atlantic. Right, so you think that they're smart and whatever, and then this guy says, no, Evo Morales' resignation is not a coup. It is one of the few big victories for democracy has won in recent years. Both leftist dictators. First of all, what is a leftist dictator? This guy's a dictator. He's giving me healthcare, education, clean water, and a living wage, the fucking asshole. What are you gonna do next, give me housing? I hate these leftist dictators. I don't think that's a thing. I don't think that's a thing. So that guy writes, for, so I retweeted that and said, this is straight up State Department propaganda and it gets printed in the Atlantic. They're the ones always warning us of the dangers of Trump lying and Russians manipulating our brains through memes. Hashtag Operation Mockingbird, motherfucker. Still going on. And you know what? There 
is no way the American government wants us to get the real story about Bolivia. No. They don't want us all uniting and coming That's together right. and g- going on the streets and fighting for what we deserve. They don't want this. They're squelching it throughout the, u- the world. And they don't want you to know that there's a socialist uh, leader who's popular and bringing those people out of poverty. They certainly don't want you to know that. And the Washington Post will make sure you won't know that. So Jorge Ramos asked Bernie Sanders about Bolivia. You know Jorge Ramos, right? He's a fucking CIA tool also. And um, you're going to see it. Watch. Wrote watch. in a tweet that, that you thought it was a military to yes. coup what happened in, in, in yeah. Bolivia. Many people have other point of view. They think that... So now here it goes. Other people think other things like the CIA. And here I'm going to say what it is right now. Here we go. Well, Morales had been in power 14 years. Yep. That he wanted to fight more and that he wanted to become a dictator. So... Uh, <laughs> What do you th- he wanted to become a dictator. <laughs> and how did he do it? By winning elections. <laughs> no, I don't agree with that la- uh, assertion. I-, I think Morales... <laughs> Morales did a very good job in alleviating poverty in giving the indigenous people of Bolivia a voice that they never had before. Now, we can argue about his going for a fourth term, whether that was a wise thing to do. And the OAS thought it was a fraud, the election on October the 20th. Some people think that as well. But at the end of the day, it was the military who intervened in that process and asked them to leave. When the military intervenes, well, hey, in my view, that's called a coup. Yes. Boy, Bernie. So Bernie's getting better. Because normally, Bernie would first repeat the CIA pretext for invasion and then say we should stay the fuck out. And since I've been on his ass for doing that, they stopped doing that. It's nice to see he's not doing it. I'm going to take credit for it. Okay. <laughs> That's called pulling him to the left. That's called pulling him to the left. All right. And uh, thank you. No way. Anyway. So the U.S. called for a military coup in the Venezuela yesterday. Did you know that? It utterly failed again, and a few hundred people in a rich elite area came out to march with Guaido. At the same time, the Chavista government held this huge rally to show solidarity, solidarity with Bolivia against the coup. Come see our live show. We're going to be in Honolulu on December 27th. We'll be in Portland, Oregon. And then we go to Tempe, Arizona, San Jose, California, Sacramento, Miami. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all the tickets for all our live shows. Come into a town near you and become a patron or support the Jimmy Dore Show. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com. Become a premium member. Thanks for your support.